Hello YouTube fans, this is F and Jew from TouchDroid. I'm just going to walk you through how to install Android 2.3.5 on your HP touchpad. This is the same Android build that we have posted on the forum. This is a highly alpha build. This is not recommended for any regular user. This is more recommended for a developer or someone who, who knows what they're doing and wants to tinker around in Android. So as you can see I have my laptop running Linux and my touchpad plugged into the laptop over USB. Make sure when you plug your touchpad in that it is not in a USB mode, make sure you still have the desktop. You'll get a little message up here as soon as you plug it in that says USB drive. Make sure you do not click that. Otherwise, you'll just have to unplug it and plug it back in and start over. So let's start from the beginning. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have Novacom or Novaterm installed on your device. These are what you're going to use to create partitions, extract files, and eventually move over to the booty partition and boot up Android. Without these pieces of software, you cannot continue. There is a step in the form itself that walks you, gives you a link and walks you through how to install it. Just go to that link. All right. Now that we've already installed Novacom and Novaterm, we'll walk through the basic steps of installing Android onto the device. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the partitions on the device. From your terminal or command prompt window, you can type Novaterm. This will connect to your touchpad and load up the bash prompt from the touchpad. From there, you're going to actually do the LVM resize and the LV create commands, which is going to create all the different mount points, the different partitions on that device. I'm going to copy the commands, but I'm actually not going to run them because I already have this installed on my device. First one is going to be the resize. This takes 1.7-ish gigs away from media, dev store media, and puts and leaves them blank for the Android system itself. This is the first command, LVM static LV resize, and the following commands from there are creating all the individual Android partitions that are needed. Make sure you copy and paste these or type them word for word. Otherwise you will get an error at the end if you type the numbers wrong saying you don't have enough partition space and you'll have to start all over again. From there you're going to actually create the file systems on these devices. Each one of these commands is going to create an extended three partition on Android Cache, Data, Etsy, Persist, and System. Make sure you copy and paste all these again, word for word. Don't mess them up or you're likely just going to get an error and you'll just have to type it again. From there, once you've created all the partitions, which, by the way, the LV resize command will, will send a warning to you. Just say yes. The rest of them should just create the partition, no problem. The extended three make file system commands are actually going to ask you yes or no each time you run them. Make sure you type yes. So just don't copy paste this whole line and drop it in there. Make sure you're typing yes each time and just run them individually. Much easier. From there, once you've actually created all those extended three partitions, you want to create the temp system drive, which mine already has one, so we'll just ignore that message. Normally it'll just respond with nothing. From there you're going to mount the actual Android system partition on slash temp slash system. Now to verify this has been mounted, you can type mount pipe grep oh, let me type this again. Mount pipe grep system. This will give you a list. What it's doing is it's pulling mount and it's grabbing for system out of mount. This is going to tell you dev map or storm android system on slash temp slash system extended three. That shows it is mounted. From there, you're going to place the file into the system partition. This is going to be done in a whole other window, command prompt or terminal. You're going to put the file. Now the one thing you want to make sure you do before you run this command is make sure you go to the directory where you downloaded the file. If you don't go there, it will not work because it will not find the file. So make sure you go to wherever you downloaded system.tar.bz and then run this command. And it's Novacom put file, single colon, two forward slashes, tab system, slash system.tar.bz. Make sure you type this all out because this is going to place the file there. If you do slash temp slash system.tar.bz, you'll get an error message because there's not enough space on slash temp for this file. Make sure you put the little less than sign and system.tar.bz. Once you place the file on your system, you can close out this window. From there, you'll be back on your touchpad. You're going to cd to slash temp slash system. And from there, you'll see that you have a system.tar.bz file. Mine doesn't because mine's already installed. 
From there, you're going to run the rest of the commands. You're going to extract the system.tar.bz. This will create a new folder called system within slash temp slash system. You're going to then cd into that new folder, change directory to system. You're going to move all the files out of system into the old system. This is a little confusing. Just run the commands as they say. Don't screw them up. Once you move the files, you can move back into the original system. Two dots will take you back one folder. And you're going to remove the newly system created directory. This will be an empty directory. You have to make sure you type rm-rf and system. Don't put a slash there. Just rm-rf system. Once you've done that, you want to cd back to your root or to slash and umount system. Or, I'm sorry, umount slash temp slash system. This will unmount that partition. You want to make sure you run that command, otherwise you may screw up some things down the road. Once you've unmounted that partition, you can now type tell booty recover. This is where it gets interesting. This, pro this little line that you type reboots the HP into the booty mode, or the bootloader mode, or whatever you want to call it. Once it's booted into booty, you'll see this little USB logo on the screen. Make sure you have that before you continue. Once you see that logo, you're going to, from your terminal window, the one that's currently open, you need to move to the folder where you downloaded the system.tar.bz. There should also be a android.uimage file there. Make sure you see that file. Otherwise, the next command will not work. From there, once you've downloaded that file, you can run the following command. Novacom boot mem colon two forward slashes less than sign and then your user image, which is going to be android.uimage. You run that and then immediately start pressing up on the touchpad. Don't hold up, just press it. Eventually you'll see a purple line on the screen which shows you that the touchpad is booting into Android. If it worked properly you should see the Android boot and you should see the desktop there which should be locked. On the initial boot it will not be locked. It will be just load up to a regular desktop. This is normal. Once you reboot into Android again it will then be locked. From there you can use the touch screen, unlock the device and tinker around. Now a lot of people are having, having problems with moving around on this device because there is no way to go back to home. There are a few different ways you can do this. You can run the ADB command, which is listed in the actual form that we have up there. There's a list of AD, ADB commands. Check those out. There's also another forum poster that has posted information about loading up and changing the power button on the device. When you press the power button, normally it just shuts the device screen off. With this new change, it sets the power button to the back button. You can still hold power to reset, but for then you can tap it and then go back to home. One further thing, once you're booted up into Android, if you need to reboot into WebOS, you have two options. You can either hold home and the power button, and you'll, and you'll see this power off thing. You just ignore that, keep holding. Eventually the system will shut itself off and reboot. Takes a few seconds here. There we go. And then you'll see the HP logo. This shows you that it's booting back up into WebOS. The other option is you can hold the power button down for a few seconds and you'll see that power off screen again. You can just tap power off. Whatever your preference is, whatever you like, you can go either way. Once it starts rebooting, you're going to immediately boot back into WebOS. The only way to stop that is if you either hold volume up in the power button, which will then reboot into booting, and you can resubmit the command to go back to Android, or wait for WebOS to restart and start over again from the tell booty recover command. That command is going to be number eight. Basically from there, once you have all this installed, you just have to restart using command eight and command nine to boot back into Android. If you have any questions or you have any issues installing this, feel free to post on the forum or ask any of the members in the, in the 
IRC channels. Hopefully some of them will still be nice enough to help you. Most of them are getting pretty annoyed by a lot of the questions, but if anything, just try to find me. I'll try to help the best I can. And hopefully with this release, the community will have a little fire lit under its ass. I like to say this a lot. You'll see it all over my posts. Hopefully they have a fire lit under their ass and maybe, just maybe, we'll get a vanilla build of Android running on this device from the community itself. Who knows, we'll see. I know CM is doing a great job. I thank them again for the touchscreen panel controller that we have for this device. Not to say it was a good reason that we got it from the original team members, but we have it now and they've approved that we can release this information with the touchpad, so I went ahead and did so and created the form. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been informative. If you have any questions, you can post in the comments or like I said, post in the form. And as always, this is FNJU from TouchDroid. Hope you enjoyed it.